to the elect and the one third of the children of Israel. Double honors to the teachers and the head apostles of the great millstone who rule well. <clears throat> Peace and salutations to the Akim who are pushing out this work with genuine truth and sincerity. I have a testimony. My name is Brother Daniela, and uh, I camp with a, a great set of brothers in Tampa, Florida. We are, un we are under the Great Millstone Doctrine, which is the whole truth and nothing but the truth of the Holy Scriptures. And, uh, I have a testimony of what happened to me last Saturday. Let's see the date of last Saturday real quick. Okay. The date of last Saturday was the 11th. So, I'm going to get straight to it. Um, Saturday, around 1 o'clock, I, I was in my home. And uh, I was, uh, you know, just fooling around a little bit. You know what I'm saying? About to get ready for camp. And I uh, wanted to light up some frankincense. Okay. I wanted to light up some frankincense and uh, the charcoal couldn't light up of all the humidity that's in Florida so what it does is if you don't protect the charcoal all the hum all the humidity will go into the charcoal so the the humidity went inside the charcoal and I couldn't light it up so I used rubbing alcohol rubbing alcohol um, it's a it's, it's a it's a it's a fire hazard and so I used that to light up the charcoal and I lit it up and uh as soon as I lit it up the the bottle was nearby and it com and it combusted it exploded like a bomb and it and it burned my kitchen and it burned me up as well it caught me on fire and um I was finna take a shower so I had no clothes and it burned and it burned me. So it burned me while I had no clothes on and it burned me from the groin between my legs all the way up to my neck to my face and burned some of my hairlines. And you know, the first thing I did was hop into the shower and then I took out the I took it I took out the fire with the shower head. And uh, by the way, it's a trailer, so everything's close by. So I used the shower head, and I sprayed the water uh, on the on the fire, and I used the sink head, and I sprayed all of the fire to put out the fire. And uh, as soon as I got done with the fire, I called the brothers, and the, the brothers, they're about 15, 20 miles away from me. And I called them, and I told them, I think I caught judgment from the Heavenly Father. And they were like, what you mean? I'm like, I got caught on fire by lighting up frankincense with rubber and alcohol. And they're like, all right, man, we're gonna be there. I don't know how long, but we're gonna be there. I said, please hurry. Uh, it was excruciating pain, pain, unbearable pain that I want no brother to go through. All right. And, you know, so as they were on their way and that I thought I like I thought they were on their way, but they were still taking care of their daily routines, you know, so um, so two o'clock game came by and I, I had no products to to even suit the pains. So I kept hopping into the shower and I was tempted to call 911. You know, and and, uh, and I had health insurance, had a, and and I had everything, and um, and I was like, the verse popped in my head, and I said, 
in your patience possess your souls. So I was like, no, no, I have to wait for the brothers. And all this going on with uh, the beginning of Jacob's trouble with this COVID-19 and the vaccine and the RFID chips, you know, spreading all over the U.S. and all over the world. I know they wouldn't want me to go to the hospital. So that's why they took their time. But they didn't know. They didn't know how severe my burns were. So I called them again. I was like, are you brothers coming by? I said, okay, okay, we're coming now. I was like, please come by. I was begging the brothers and, and they told me to pray to y'all about Shema Shai. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll pray. I'll pray. And while I was praying, like uh, you can feel my flesh. Like, like, like you can, like, like I can feel my flesh splitting open in, uh, in like very, very high heat. Like when you heat up uh, like chicken from a restaurant and you put it in the microwave and the, and the meat splits open, like the excruciating pain that I was going through, it made me, it made me want to, uh, made me want to tap out, but the spirit allowed me to endure it until the brothers came and then almost, almost, uh, close to three o'clock they came with some aloe and uh and all these natural remedies but it, until they saw my pain they were like oh my gosh we gotta go to the hospital i was like we got I, I told them we got no choice i got health insurance for my job and i'm ready to go so i slapped on some pants and i slapped on some shoes and put no shirt on only pants and shoes and my bandana. So we went to the hospital, you know, and brother Ephraim, um, that, bro, uh, that brother's a transporter. He know how to drive. So we we took that expressway and we made it to the Tampa General Hospital. And we made it there. And I made it to the front entrance and the brothers told me, whatever you do, do not allow them to give them the, uh, like, do not allow them to give you that vaccine. They don't take the RFID chip. I was like, brothers, I'm ready to die for this thing, man. So I'm not going to take no RFID chip or vaccine. And if you see me on the news dead, you will know that I didn't take the RFID chip. So I went into the hospital and they checked me in. Had to wait four hours for a room. Four hours for a room while I was still burning on the bed. They gave me something to soothe down the pain, but it wasn't enough, you know? So I would like to go to a Bible um, a Bible verse real quick. So this is First Peter chapter four, verse 12. Beloved, think it not a strange concerning the fiery child, which is to, uh, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, and as much as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So I was like, is this a, is this a punishment of not doing enough work? Is this a punishment from the past life? Um, and then like, there was so many question marks that was popping in my head. You know, and then as soon as I realized it was chastisement, he chastised the ones that he loves. He'll put you through the fire. He'll put you through anything. And the things I'm about to tell you are these past few days while I was in, in this hospital. I hope it put the fear of the Lord in you, brothers, because it could this could happen to any brother in this truth even worse Yahweh forbid that this will happen to you okay Yahweh forbid fire sucks burning through your flesh rubbing alcohol and fire is a terrible combination for your flesh and I keep asking myself if I can't handle that, how much more nuclear missile? And I don't want to feel a nuclear missile. 
I'll do all that I can to never feel that kind of pain ever as long I'm in this vessel I'll never want to feel that missile calm down and burn inside and out of my body while I'm still alive while the Heavenly Father is doing that slow roast on everybody who took that chip so I hope this testimony will put the fear of the Lord in you okay so day one I made it to my room and um, before I went to my room uh, a, a few nurses told me that they were going to sedate me meaning to put me to sleep okay and you know us Jake we have a very strong pain tolerance all right because through captivity uh, each captivity we've been whipped we've been beaten and we, we were able to still work after we healed excuse me and we weren't able and, and, and we were able to still work with all the scars that they that our oppressors gave us okay so the nurses told me they were going to sedate me and remove all the dead skin from my body and I was like okay good I'm gonna be asleep while they remove the dead skin from my body okay and within the 24 hour period you see the true results of the burns okay it wasn't 24 hours yet so they put me in a room in the burn unit of the hospital and not all hospitals have burn units so because uh, the, the person in the room, he was from uh, a city from two hours away and they flew him in a helicopter or, or transported him to this hospital because not every hospital has a, burn, uh, a special burning unit. So I made it to the burning unit and they put me in the bed and I saw warm water, sterile warm water. And they had towels and they had a... Uh, um, like a, a scraping scraping system like a scraping tool to scrape off the dead skin and they gave me some pills but they told me those pills ain't gonna kick in until like 45 minutes to an hour later but we gotta get this done now so I was like you guys are not gonna sedate me they're like no I'm sorry we gotta take care of this right now so we gotta take pictures to send to the doctor so they would they scraped all the skin from the groin from the groin area between my thighs all the way up to my stomach all the way up to my chest to my neck and to my face while I was still awake while I was still awake and I had to feel every single bit of pain every single bit of it every single bit and the spirit was on me to to uh, bear the pain the spirit was on me I could feel the spirit that um, was overcoming like the 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 pain receptors over my body and I was like I was like, yes, I'm out. I was calling y'all about Shamel Shai. I said, please help me, please help me. It was excruciating pain. Okay. And each day, and then, and then they wrapped me up and they put this, uh, on the silver, the silver cream, because something in silver can heal wounds very quick. Okay. It can heal wounds, uh, some sort of uh, like a, just silver alone, uh, an element. So it's like this cream mixed with uh, with different chemicals, and silver is the main ingredient, and it heals wounds quick, especially burnt wounds. All right. So, and um, they wrapped me up in uh, in gauze pads. 
and then put me in something like this and uh and they wrapped me up and they gave me some medicine to overcome the pain some oxycodone and, and other and other pills and that was that that was uh the first night <clears throat> that was the first night the second night i i ate some food and i noticed that i had no bowel movements and i wasn't able to you know go number two you know and uh and they, and they kept giving me these these laxatives uh, in pill form to maybe go use the restroom. But I was like, I have no bowel movements, you know, because usually these things will, you know, help me move my stomach. And then each day got worse. I had no bowel movements after, uh, after day one, day two, day three, day four. And uh, and I reason and the reason why I had no bowel movements, cause one I was traumatized, two, two. The narcotics that they gave me stops you from using the bathroom, so it it hardens the um, the system in your stomach, in your bowel in your bowel movements. So it, I was desired not to eat. And I was in so much pain with my burnt pains. This will remind me of something in the Bible that Job went through. So let's get it. Job chapter 33 verse 19. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. So that his life abhorreth bread and his soul dainty meat. So. I abhorred of eating anything that they gave me because I wasn't able to use the restroom. I was able to do number one, but not number two for a few days and which, which caused me, um, to became in, 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 in a nauseous in nausea. And the more they gave me narcotics, the worse I got. And then I became hallucinating from the narcotics that hasn't broken down in my bowel movements and they kept giving me one thing after another and I was like you stop we, the main important thing right now is for me to to make my bowel move because if the, the more you give me narcotics the more I cannot eat and the more I can eat the more unstable I am on top of my injuries. That's why I can't eat. That's why I hate everything that you guys bring in. I need to eat something with fibers. Give me something healthy to eat, which they do. They have healthy things here to a certain extent, but it will mess you up. If you can't take care of your bowel movements, it's so important for your bowels to move. That's your second brain. A lot of people need to know that. That's why fasting is so important. Fasting and beneficial fasting is so important. I keep telling people that, but they don't want to listen to me. They don't want to listen to me. As soon as I get out this hospital, your heart rotters are. I'm going to turn over a new leaf with my life. How I eat. How I do this work. Everything. Everything will be done decently and in order. I truly love your heart bash my shot for this. Because I understand people of the world will never understand. They will think the devil done this. What well, devil has a part of doing this, but it's truly the heavenly father doing it to you. You got to look at both aspects of the heavenly father. He 
consider the works of Yahweh. Rejoice in, um, in, um, in the joyful days, but the days of adversary, you know, consider, you have to consider the adversary and you rejoice in the good days as well. But days like these, you rejoice. I rejoice because I understand. I understand who's in control. This is what makes a king. A king got to get his scars, got to get everything to make him stronger, to make him a warrior for what's about to come. And guess what? I'm healing so fast. I'm walking up and down that hall. And people are like, I've never seen a burn patient walk by himself up and down the hall. That's a good sign. That's positivity. You got to endure it. Let's get that real quick. Then we're going to go back to the trials and tribulations. So this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, 6. Chapter, uh, chapter 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and, and scorcheth, in which I was scorched with heat, and fire, and rub and alcohol. Every son whom he receiveth, he's not gonna put you some he's not gonna put you through something that you can't handle. He ain't gonna put you through something that you cannot handle. He's gonna put you through something knowing that you can heal. Knowing that he heals, I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Deuteronomy 32, 39. He will heal, he will heal me. The dog is doing what they have to do, but he does the healing. Understand? You gotta know these precepts within your heart. You gotta know who's doing it. Very important. All right, let me start from the top. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6 For whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth if he endure chastening Yahweh dealeth with you as with sons you're his son if he put you through things like these if he put you through financial problems if you've gone homeless if anything happens to you whether great or small He's dealing with you. I forgot to tell. I need to tell this a few, uh, about a few weeks ago. I was threatened by an angel during camp because I was condemned in my own mind. I wanted to step down of my position and let a brother come above me and take my place. And it was all in the spirit. You, you couldn't see it through the camp video. But all I heard, I heard a big behind Jake Angel touch my shoulder and he spoke through my ear. He said, you know, I can't let you do that, right? I can't let you do that. And as soon as I heard the angel, I thought of Psalms 34 and 7. Let's grab that real quick and I'm going to finish that. Let's get them precepts. Precepts are very important. That's what's going to help you sustain yourself in these last days. Isaiah 33 and 6, For wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. It will be the stability of thy times. And you must believe that. Psalms 34 and 7, The angel of the Lord that campeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. So when we're out at camp, or when you're at home, or when you're at the grocery store, or walking down the street, going to work, the angel of the Lord of camp is around about them that fear him. For you to have angels around you, you have to fear the Lord. You, first, you have to fear the Lord first before you love him. And we know inside rock, to fear the Lord is the beginning of his love. Just like how we feared our parents, if we went off, we feared that they were gonna um, whoop us, punish us, 
That's the same with the Heavenly Father. That's the same. So that angel who threatened me at camp saying that because I was so condemned, I was so depressed because, you know, I thought I was never good enough and I was being condemned in my own mind. The angel said, that's not going to happen. And, and, uh, and I was like, what? And he was like, you are not going to step down. If you do, I will kill you right in front of your brothers. I'll kill you right in front of your brothers. I'll make you drop dead or I could put a spirit in you so you can jump right in front of that transit. And that's a transit that go round about in that little tiny city that we always go to. So the transit where it can bring you from one place to another place within that city. And it just goes around and around and around and around. He said, it's either that I can make your heart, I can give you a heart attack and make you drop dead. Or I could put a spirit of suicide and make you jump in front of that train. And they cannot help you. you where you are right now, you're good. Stay where you are. And to that day, I knew the Heavenly Father was dealing with me. No man can say the Heavenly Father is not dealing with me. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody can say the Heavenly Father is not dealing with me. Not one soul. And I told, I told, I told uh, the leader of the camp, Brother Ibar, and I told the second in command, a ball. I told them both. I told them both what happened at camp. And it was all in the spirit. And they told me, don't be condemned in your own mind. And look, and guess what? He is dealing with you. We got to be strong in this thing. Understand? So back to the trials and tribulations. So each day was more of a challenge here in this hospital. The employees are nice, you know? And I didn't tell my mom <laughs> about anything about, uh, about what I've been through until the day before the surgery, which was today, which didn't last too long because they told me the majority of my body is healing so quick. They didn't have to do much, but they want to keep me here for the rest of the week until next Monday. All right. So each night it was a little tougher. I just got tougher and tougher and tougher, knowing that I couldn't use the bathroom yet. And I was going through all these um, strange, these strange apparitions found in narcotics. I was still stuck in my bowels and being attacked by demons every single night I've been attacked by demons can you imagine being attacked by demons and and then they're playing with your mind while you're going through this pain and it's not fun but the names of your Shimel Shai kept me calm I wasn't able to do any videos. I wasn't able to watch any videos of how much the pain that I was going through. But the but the voices of my brothers calling me and texting me to see how I'm doing to soothe my spirit. It soothed my spirit. And what made it better, you know, they stayed on top of it. They made sure I was okay. And that's, and that's a very beautiful thing to have a brotherhood in this walk. How can one, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you can't warm yourself by yourself. You got to have another to warm you as well. You can't be alone in this truth. Even King Solomon said that in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. 
You can't be alone. It's good to have a brotherhood. All right. Let's get the next preset. Oh, and uh, and I had a roommate within the room. Like each burn unit has a, um, like each burn unit has a um, rooms with two beds, and I had a roommate, and either my roommate, and uh, his process was already done. Like the like uh, his uh, s surgery was already done, but he didn't tell me the severity of his burns until he told me. So. And he told me like uh, that he was cooking in the kitchen, trying to cook chicken in the kitchen at his girlfriend's house. All right. Now, I thought I was going through it. The Edomai was going through it way worse than me. He had a grease burn from cooking chicken. All right. So his burns are so severe. It burned from the leg down. Now remember, I got burned from the mid leg to the groin all the way up to my neck and a little bit on my face and some of my hair. He got it from the leg down from the back of his leg from the all his groin, all of his stomach, all of his arms all of his fingers all the way up to his back about first to second degree burns second degree burns on his legs all right he was going through it I know and he was going through it guys I tell you not and I'm gonna mention him again, and you see why the the so uh, the Edomites claim that they're the children of Israel. The things I'm about to tell you, there's no way that they built those pyramids in Egypt. <laughs> I tell you that. I'm gonna tell you that very very quickly. All right, so I might as well. So the <clears throat> so the roommate that I had. Um, he, he finished his surgery and, um, and they, and he had staples from a skin graft. So skin graft is, is when they grab the, the, um, good skin from the body and, uh, they cut off the good skin and they add the layer of good skin all over the burnt areas of your body. And, um, he had skin grafts all over his legs, his fingers and his arms. And um, and uh, one of the nurses told me, would you like to put on a video on the TV and put some headphones on? So I'm like, what you mean? Cause you know, and she was like, well, we're gonna, we're gonna start cleaning up his um, area where he got the skin grafts from. We're gonna take out the staples from his body. And I was like, okay, no problem. So I went on YouTube on, on the TVs and, uh, and I tried to listen to uh, one of the elders and apostles on the TV and I put on some headphones. But let me tell you, man, it was impossible, impossible to listen to the elders and apostles because that brother was screaming at the top of his lungs, like in pain. All right, like I thought the brother was dying, but all they were doing was cleaning his wounds, and he was on narcotics. And certain treatments that they cleaned my wounds, I wasn't on narcotics. I had to deal with the pain. Like I said, some people, mainly Jakes, we have higher pain tolerances. It still hurts, but we can handle it more. But not these Edomites. No, sir. No, sir. As each 
the staple got out of his body. He was crying on the top of his lungs. Almost the whole burning unit area heard him. And then like uh and they had to stop just so he can catch breath and so his blood pressure can go lower. And like so like they had to do round two on him. And then the nurse asked me, Would you like to leave the room? And I was like, No, I'm gonna stay here. But I didn't I but I didn't tell the reason why I wanted to stay, but I wanted to stay to hear his pain. I wanted to stay and study his pain. Because what I was going through, I was able to bear it. It was tough, but I wanted to hear his pain tolerance. And he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a few years younger than me, you know, so I wanted to hear from him. So I lay down on my bed and I put no headphones on. I just lay there and I listened to him. And, uh, and then of course, there's like a, um, a drape between our, uh, like between the rooms. So the two nurses were stapling sorry unstapling and cleaning the grafts skin grafts you know scrubbing it and uh they're like man would you like to put on some music so like uh you know you know Edomites are that they loved uh that heavy metal all right so you know that tough music that they play you know and the dude was like singing along he said yeah you like this band yeah this band's great I was like, oh, jeez, you know, uh, eating mice will be eating mice and just, you know, like, you know, like that's how they act. So I'm like, all right, I'm just listening to them. And then they were singing along with these bands and stuff. And then as soon as they took off another staple, that brother was, that dude was crying. And I was like, I was like, there's no way that they build the pyramids. <laughs> Uh, build the pyramids in the Egyptian captivity. There's no way, no way. All right, and he was just crying so hard. I was like, if he was in the kingdom, he wouldn't make it in the slave fields. Like his pain tolerance is so low, it's ridiculous. That's like if he can't handle that, how much more in the uh, in the kingdom? You know what I'm saying? And the dude, he said sorry every single day, every time he cried like that. And I was like, hey, man, you good, you good, you know? I was like, uh, you know, you no, know, the verse be peaceful, um, live peacefully with all men, you know? And plus, he was the roommate of this room. So he kept being nice, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I asked him for, um, for, you know, simple things like turn down the TV. Put on your headphones, watch the TV with your headphones on. Let me borrow your charger. You know what I'm saying? And and then today was his last day. And he was like, I'm sorry that I had them, you know, had them make you hear all those wailings and cryings. But I like you I like to let you have this charger. You know, I have a lot of chargers, but I want you to have this one. And like and then I finally saw him full fledged and full color. I finally saw him how he truly looked like. And he looked straight at me. And let me tell you how spiritual this was. He looked at me and he looked straight into my eyes and he wanted mercy. He had mercy in his eyes and he was just shaking. And I was like, you know what I'm saying? I just nodded my head. You know? And and, 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 and and that's the last time I saw him. You know? So he's probably on his way home now. But yeah. Their pain tolerance versus our pain tolerance. It's way different. There's no way that they were the children of Israel. Not by an inch. All right, so let's get back to the precepts. All right, so let me grab Psalms real quick. So Psalms 94, verse 12. Blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth, O, o, o Yahweh, 
and teaches him out of thy law okay so everything that we, we read it goes back to the law okay and I'm gonna grab the law real quick so blessed is the man that chasteneth, O Lord and that was Psalms 94 and 12 blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth, O Lord and teaches him out of thy law that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until be and, and until the pit be digged for the wicked. You see, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity. Suffer now and rest later. Suffer now. Go through hell now. Whatever type of hell that the Heavenly Father gives you, you rejoice. 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 Whatever hell you're going through right now, you rejoice. He will take care of you. He will take care of you. Like he's taking care of me. He will take care of you. As soon as I let my family know yesterday, as soon as I let my mama know, <laughs> my mama told the whole family. I heard my brother, I heard my aunties from Texas, I heard everybody. As soon as that, as soon as I, as soon as my mama heard that, she sped down to Tampa. She can't go into the hospital because these hospitals won't allow anybody to come in unless the person's going in operation that day because of this uh, pandemic. So it's very, very hard for visitors these days. All right. So since my mama heard that, my mom said, give me your address. Give me everything right now. So my mama, she, I gave her my address and stuff. While I was in the hospital, she cleaned up my crib where it was burned up and messed up. And boy, she made it look beautiful. So when I come home, it's going to look nice. I'm not going to come home to a destroyed crib. It's going to look beautiful. And it's going to stay that way. My mama drove almost two hours from where she lived at with my with my younger sister and they clean up my crib you see how the heavenly father work i'm gonna come home to a cleaned up crib and they gave me some cleaning products you know to keep up with the dishes to keep over and to keep up with everything it's beautiful you see how he's looking out for me and soon i'll be on disability to get my strength back, to get everything back before I go back to work, if, the, if this world lasts that long. All right. You gotta always prepare your mind for the for the unexpected. Okay, but he will always look after his beloved. All right. So, Psalms ninety four and thirteen. That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until until the pit be digged for the wicked. The wicked ain't the wicked, they're not really going through this. They're still trying to chase that American dream to be comfortable in this society. Alright? That's a terrible mentality to have. They don't want us um like like they want the good from the Heavenly Father and the Son, but they don't want the bad. So how are you going to get the reward if you don't want the bad neither? Okay. You got to have the whole, you got to have the whole roll, the whole meal. Let's get a precept that that uh that links up with Psalms 94. So this is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, 
we are chastened of the Lord. Let's read that again. First Corinthians 11 and 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Okay. If we judge ourselves, nothing will really happen. They're like, oh, okay, I'm wrong. Forgive me, y'all, but Shemar Shai, forgive that person or, or that person uh, trespasses against you. Uh, uh, I forgive you. I forget. Let's keep it moving. And then, you know, you keep it moving. Go on and, 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 and just go on. You know, verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. I'm going to read that again. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. It's better to be chastened by the Lord than to be condemned by the world. It's better for you to go to hell and high water through the heavenly father than to be condemned with the world. And what is that? Um, um, what is that? That is the end all be all of Babylon the Great, which is which will lead on to Jacob's trouble, which will lead on to the plagues and the end all be all. When everyone accepts the mark of the beast, RFID chip, the whole world is going to be burned by nuclear fire. 200 million missiles mentioned in Revelations 9, 16 through 18. 200 um, intercontinental ballistic missiles are going to burn this place up. For everyone in it who accepted the image of the beast and Revelation 13 who accepted the new world order and that's going to be the majority of the world the whole world are, are going to eat nukes but America is going to be the main place to be targeted because at the world drunk the wine of, of Babylon Okay. When you see this, I know I look terrible, but listen, let this put the fear of the Lord in you. Let this put the fear of the Lord in you. It got me good, brothers. It got me good, sisters. It got me good. And I'm healing quick. And they see it too. They're like, man, this brother's healing quick. And I'm going to pray that they will discharge me soon. Lord willing. And he's all in control. Understand? Remember I told you that I was going to grab something from the law. So I'm going to go back to Psalms 94 real quick. So Psalms 94, blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Yahweh and teaches him out of thy law. So let's grab something from the law that links up to that. So this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 5. Thou shalt also consider thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy, uh, thy power chasteneth thee. The same way your pops chasteneth you, the Heavenly Father is going to do the same thing to you he's gonna put you through it he put a lot of people through it he put Yahweh Shai Mashiach through it he put the prophets through it he put Job through it did King David get sick you know sorry um one of them arm pressures went off you know what I'm saying? He's going to put you through it. The elect are going to go through it, but they won't endure. It's going to make y'all kings. 
the most powerful kings in the universe. Y'all going to be the most powerful kings in the universe, and I hope to be a part of that number. To stand with Yahweh Shai and to glorify the Heavenly Father forever. This music to my ears. Every time I hear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Akakadash, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. When it comes out of my mouth, it's it's beautiful to my ears and to my soul every time I hear those names. You know, I think that's the majority of the precepts. Let me grab Job 5 real quick. So this is the book of Job chapter 5, verse 17. Behold, happy is the man who, who, who Yahweh corrective. Therefore, despise not that chastising of the Almighty. Nehemiah 1 and 5, the great and terrible God, the great and terrible power. He's the great and the terrible. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Psalm 66 and 5, come see the works of God for he is terrible and is doing toward the children of men. Sorry, they had uh, one of the nurses I had to check my, um, check my, uh, vitals like my temperature and all that so back to what back to what i was saying you know in job chapter 5 verse 17 um, behold happy is the man who um yahweh corrective therefore despise thou the chastising therefore despise not thou the chastising of the almighty all right christian church says god is good all the time and Throughout my life, I say he's all he's good all the time. He's good all the time, and I'm like, no. If he sent plagues to Egypt and kill all and kill all those Egyptians, if he put Job through hell and high water, and he didn't, you know, really deserve it, and you know what I'm saying, and then and then Revelation is a very scary book that a lot of people cannot read. And I was like, you know what I'm saying? There was a lot of question marks. I was like, he must be uh, some sort of balance. He must be controlling everything. You know? And, and, and uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, so I had to pray, man. I had to pray. I didn't know the names back in the day. But I was like, I know he was dealing. I know he was dealing with me. And I was like, man, I had so many questions. I've been through so many doctrines of Christianity and all that, and I'm like, man, I think God is not good all the time. He's a powerful God, but he's not good all the time, you know? Because everything that I've been through, I was like, man, this is the devil, this is the devil. I was like, man, no. Sometimes I was like, man, this ain't the devil, that was me. I messed up. So what's going on? <laughs> You know, so I was like, until I got into this truth and I learned about this truth in, back in 2016, you know, I didn't know Great Millstone until 2018, until I met Brother Eber. So I didn't know nothing about Great Millstone until 2018. 2016, I just knew, I knew these purple and gold people and there were IYC and my spirit wasn't clicking with them so the closest people that clicked with me was the light of Zion you know brothers from Miami Florida so like those those are ones that I watched and then I watched a little of um, Adam Abbott a uh, bot but my spirit didn't really click click with his either so I just watched the light of Zion from time to time and watch his brother Yashlam videos before he bugged out, you know. And then until I met Brother Eber through Nations and Kings and Priests, man, you know. That's when he told me about Great Millstone. I was like, really? And everything that the elders and apostles were saying, it all clicked. It all clicked. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So my, so my whole life. Satan was just doing his job. 
And it was the Heavenly Father doing everything. You know? So that must put the fear of the Lord in you. All right? I'm still alive. I'm still, I was still able to call my brothers. I'm still able to call my mama. You know? My sisters. I heard my auntie today. I heard my cousin today. I'm alive, brothers. I'm alive. Things could have been much worse. Things could have been much worse, brothers. Much worse. But he didn't make it worse. Because he had mercy. He had mercy. We serve a merciful God. In the graceful period that we have to do right. Let this testimony... Put the fear of the Lord in you, but also to remind you that we're all going to go through something of all aspects of life. But make sure you rejoice because that means He's dealing with you. I love y'all, man. I hope nothing but the best. All right. I hope this was edifying to the elect. Call La Abana Yahweh, Bashim, Hamashak Yahweh Shai, Bashim Ha Wakakadash. Double honors to the teachers and the head of pause of the great Muslim rule well. Peace and salutations to the all came are pushing out this work with genuine truth and sincerity. Till next time I say Shalom.